At this point, the initial home inspection, it just wasted our money and our time. I already know I'm pulling this down. How could somebody miss an entire window? Is that not the worst you've ever seen? It just gets worse and worse and worse, and it's scary. If you just touch those, you're dead. Anka and Paul, they picked this area because it's not only beautiful, but it has everything that we're looking for. A school right around the area, all their friends, her first home, and for their three kids, magic. They hired a home inspector. Good news. Bad news is I'm here. That means something went wrong with the home inspection. What did he miss? Well, I'm going to find out. I'm going to take a look at everything. I'll make it right. We've been together for a few years. We decided that it was a good time now to move together. I have a daughter, Paul has two boys. We hope that now we're gonna come together as a family. I was looking uh, for something in this area. We knew that we need at least three bedrooms, two bathrooms. When we first walked in, visually, it wasn't the most appealing. But when we started looking closer, we realized it appeared on the surface to be more of a cosmetic thing. So we, we looked past that and started to look at uh, the layout. And we got kind of attracted to the multi-level. It felt, you know, it felt like we all had a different space we could be in. It basically just looked like a place that all five of us could fit well. <laughs> we got the home inspector as recommended by a friend. Total, it was about uh, two hours. There were no glaring red flags. It was very, you know, if we were doing a test, it kind of it said it was more of a, you know, 70% for the age, decent house. There shouldn't be anything really serious you need to worry about. So for me, it was like, wow, I have my first house. We both uh, wanted the same thing, and we finally found it. Hello, Mike. Hey, How must are be you? Anka. Yes, I'm Anka. Paul. Nice to meet you. I'm Mike. Nice to meet you both. Paul, Anka. Yes. Do you ever get that? Occasionally. Oh, no. <laughs> when we were painting the kitchen, I noticed the ceiling lamp. It was working the same way when we came and looked at the house. It kind of swung. Uh, when I went to take it down to paint around it, I realized the only thing holding it up were the two wires. And then when we got the appliances delivered, I tried to get the stove to work. Uh, no power. What I quite literally had to do on the panel was shake all the fuses around, and all of a sudden the power came back on. It made us very worried. Let's take a walk down your basement. OK. This was built in 1968. Since it was before 1985, we could have a 1 to 5 ratio of asbestos in the plaster. These tiles that I'm looking at right now could have asbestos in the tile. And I know by looking at it, these are original tiles, and the possibility of asbestos in those tiles are large, actually. I was hoping I wouldn't hear the word asbestos. You know, I don't want to bring my boys into that environment here, you know, taking from an apartment, going to a house very excited, then going, oh, now let's, you know, let's bring on the health issues. I, I don't want to do that. That's not, that was not the plan, you know. So these are things that I'm going to be looking into. Let's just take a walk upstairs. It was the third or the fourth day after we moved in. And we were all um, in the backyard. And I look up and I saw the window from my daughter's bedroom. And then I saw another window. And I was very confused. I'm like, there is no other room other than the bathroom next to my daughter's room. That means that our bathroom has a window that it's covered. How could somebody miss an entire window? I read in the report, vinyl tub surround in the bathroom upstairs. He feels the wall, right? And he writes in the report that it seems well secured. So, well secured. Oh, wait a minute. Not well secured. Because if I can do that, it's not well secured. It's peeling all the paint, and that's really simple because it's all that hot steam that's coming from the water and it's not being exhausted out. We want at least an exhaust fan or a window, and preferably both. So why would somebody close up this window? Did they cover up something really bad? And when I open this up, we're not going to like what we see. Simple as that. It called into question every single thing. You'd love to close the door, maybe put some tape on, say, OK, nobody use the washroom <laughs> for a couple of years, you know. 
but we can't do that. We were in a very bad position knowing that we had to get something done. We don't know what's going on behind the wall, and once we start, we have to finish it. You can't afford it, but you can't afford to leave it either. There's a bit of a drop here. <laughs> a bit of a drop? Yeah, we're yep. missing a, a step. You're missing a step. A middle, someone stole their middle step or something. Well, I don't see signs that there was ever a middle step. You notice if your concrete slab here, this is actually nice and dark here, and this piece here, that says it's original. There wasn't another piece. Uh, did he write this or talk about this at all? No. Not at all. I do expect him to make in the report that if any steps are different in size, especially a step that looks like almost 12 inches in height, that that has to be in the report because that is a, that's a minimum code issue problem that I'm seeing is that we have an exhaust vent here, which is your dryer. We have an exhaust vent here, which is a hot water heater. We are too close to the window, right? This is going to off-gas a whole bunch of gas we don't want coming back inside. Have you ever smelled gas inside the house? Oh, yeah, in the living room. In the living room. Well, that's a bad sign, because that can make you very sick. I was surprised that it would be not noted that something so dangerous was just flat out right in front of you like that. Here's our purge valve. So here's our purge valve. What they've done is taken a line and exhausted out here. So here's where it'll purge. And when I talk about purge is sometimes that gas meter can just spit off a little bit of gas. Problem that I see is whoever did the air conditioner and you had someone bring, do it? Correct. OK, we have an issue because this electrical box is way too close to the purge. That line should be in a conduit because if it gets damaged, the gas line purges, the air conditioner starts up, that could be dangerous. Think about it. Gas, electricity, do not mix. Everything we've seen so far has all been visual things that should not have been missed. I'm going to grab my tools, and I'm going to go through all this, and I'm going to bring it back, and I'm going to tell you what I find and what I'm going to have to do to fix it. We're going to get a strong drink. You should get a strong <laughs> drink, because I already feel you got a lot of problems. This is the greatest example I could ever show of a car breath. This house was supposed to be, you know, our home. And uh, it doesn't feel like that anymore. One problem, two problems, three problems, four problems, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine problems right here. After taking the tour with Mike, it just gets worse and worse and worse. We would have walked away from this deal had our home inspection originally shown even showing the potential for this many problems would have caused us to step away from the deal for sure. It's a hot day. You know, I mean, I even wonder if the home inspector walked in the garage. Right away, I see the copper pipe running from the front up, down, over, and across. So I have a shutoff here for drainage. Now, it comes from inside the basement. Here itself is the shutoff, and I even have a hose bib. And that, what that's going to be is so I can drain it in the winter so it doesn't freeze. Here's the problem. Just walk backwards. I'm going to follow this pipe along. And we're going to go uphill, which is good. And we're going to come across. And then we're going to go downhill. And I have a shutoff right here. And on the other side of this, I saw it when I walked in the house. It's only a, a male. So a male is where they screw the hose on. There's no tap. There's no shutoff or turn on and off. But you have to think about draining this in the winter so it doesn't freeze. Is it going to freeze in here? The answer is yes, it's going to freeze. I would say that it's already frozen once, maybe possibly twice, because we have two couplings in this pipe. We have a little bit of a belly in that pipe, right? Which means water is going to sit across here, and that's going to freeze. This is the old concrete uh, ceiling without stone, so they just, just master plasters put it up. Well, what do we see? We see a ton of holes, right? And you see a ton of holes, and I mean a ton of holes. Shouldn't the home inspector who came in know that these holes are an issue and you want to, you want to say something about it? The kitchen's directly above this. That's, that's to me, it's a big deal. Because that's all that off-gassing from your vehicle that you don't want to come in the house that absolutely will drive into the house. And that's, that's, that's dangerous. I already know I'm pulling this down. I know that way I can look at the electrical, I can look at the plumbing, and I can insulate it. I can take a look also at the HVAC to make sure that by the time I leave this house, they're not gonna freeze this winter. Electrical, you know, the panel's old. What I'm really upset about at this point right now is, you see those two bars right there? That's full power coming in. They're totally exposed, there's no blockage here, no blockage here, that if you just touch those, you're dead. There's no playing with that. That's full power. This is an absolute no-no. 
So it was the homeowner himself who was jigging away and got it working. That is so dangerous. It's ridiculous because that's raw power. The fuse, fuse is how much amperage is going out. These are 15 amp, we have 30, 30 amp and 40 amp. That is a full 100 amp line. You touch that by accident with a screwdriver, I don't care. You won't make it through the day. You'll be gone immediately. The inspector catch that? I didn't see it in the report. Nah, bad news, bad news. Things that I know to look for. You know, just like any other old house that I'm used to seeing, this would be the, I'm gonna assume the dining room upstairs. The kitchen's over here, so the table and chairs are there. This recess was a smart idea in design. What it does is stops all that driving rain from hitting the front door, because if the front door is brought to here, it's accessible to that weather. Bringing it back here actually works. Here's the issue. This is a wood ceiling, so we'll call it a soffit, okay? It is the dining room up above. And if we look again, window means I need a register, right? So a register should be in the floor right under that window, which means there's a duct line in here. Plumbing? Hopefully not. But that's cold. If that's so cold on that duct line, you think you're gonna heat the dining room? No. Now, I kind of wish home inspectors would uh, actually pull up the register like I just did. We've had water in this ductwork because I see a whole bunch of rust. This is the front door area I'm talking about downstairs. So this is the cold zone. So we have hot air meeting cold air from outside, and this can be condensating. And odds are that's exactly what has happened. So I'm just going to take a picture of that. It's going to show the importance of why I got to pull that down downstairs and insulate it properly. I can see that this is a stick down tile. This is a linoleum, OK? And underneath that, we have a vinyl tile. In 1968, there was a lot of houses with vinyl tile that had asbestos. There is three floors here. One of them has a possibility of asbestos. OK, clearly see the six-inch exhaust, right? If you follow it to this side over here, you're going to see the louvered there. Very greasy. So somebody had a really good exhaust fan in there pulling up a lot of grease, steam. That's being pumped out. So here's two problems that I see right away. This duct line leads to what? Outside. So when winter comes, and it's not hooked up to anything, it's not exhausting any heat out, what it's doing is pulling cool air in. So that's really not smart. Should it be there? What is missing here? If I had an exhaust fan here, I don't see any electrical that powered this exhaust fan. So no electrical means they more than likely ran it down and plugged it in the receptacle that's right here. It's cold water, it's not hot. So it's half decent news. That would drive me nuts. That'd keep me awake at night. I mean, this is also something that's not good. So here we see our slat flooring that's down, the original. And remember, the garage is directly underneath me, and we can see the, the and just under the sink was the hole in the ceiling. So remember all the holes in the ceiling that I talked about allowing the gases to come in? Well, here's your easy route in the house. Easy. Because it's not hooked up. <laughs> oh, I love my job. Got a lot of work to do in this house, I can tell you that much. Yo, OK, that is one dirty filter. We really have to teach people how important it is to clean the filters of the furnace, because remember, this is the lungs of your house. This will clean the air before your lungs clean the air. Keep that filter clean. You don't want to use these lungs. They'll look like that. Mr. Holmes! Mr. Bennett, I'm downstairs. Downstairs, OK. I'll find out later today whether or not we have asbestos in the plaster okay. tile. We know we're going to be uh, pulling out the bathroom. And as well, I'm going to be pulling the ceiling in the garage due to ductwork, due to insulation. So they've got cold titsies, all right. Yeah, well, they don't yet. They don't know it, but I already <laughs> right. know. So right. that's, since we're here, let's, let's fix everything. What I quite literally had to do on the panel was basically shake all the fuses around, and all of a sudden, the power came back on. That's full power coming in. That's huge power. That's dangerous. Should the inspector have known that? Yes, he should have. Frankie. Hey, Mike. Another one of these electrical jobs, eh? Yeah. How do you like that? 
Uh, yeah, that's a serious problem that we've got here because if you were to touch any of those buzz bars there, so this one over here carries 120 volts, the other one carries another 120 volts. If you were to touch both, you got 240 volts. Basically, if you can fit a dime inside any of these, like any crevice or something, you can get something in there, like a screwdriver, you're only leaving, you know, open dangers for anybody. You know, and it's definitely, uh, definitely a no-no. Yes. So right off the top, we're gonna change the panel, get rid of this. It looks like a car has uh, hit it. Hit it. Which means there's a possibility of damage to the wire. Oh, it's like right open. Well, the conductors look all fine, so we're okay with that. So we're just gonna have to replace a section of pipe. We're gonna have to open these two up. We wanna make sure that the utility's gonna come in to disconnect the main power to here, which is back at the transformer. And then what we'll do is we'll also put the angle iron back so that if a car tries to back in again, it'll hit the angle iron, not our pipe. That shit, well, this was built in 1968. Whether or not that was mandatory to be, I mean, it's common sense to me. I honestly don't remember. I'd have to go back and check the date. The, uh, yeah, the 60. You don't remember? Come on. Book. You changed the book every four years. When were you born? 69. Oh, okay. So it was the year before you? <laughs> you <laughs> okay. I'm old. <laughs> You did the test and you found? Um, there's asbestos in a, a number of items. The walls, the drywall compound, the ceilings. All the drywall compound is asbestos. So. Vinyl tile. And the vinyl floor tile is non-asbestos on the top and asbestos containing below. So that means? You have two layers. So they've covered it up. Yeah, you can put flooring over top of asbestos containing vinyl tile, but you're burying a liability. What's going to happen now when you have to remove the tiles is both layers are going to have to go as asbestos because you can't separate them. So you take one layer and you add another, and, and basically now all it's going to be is asbestos containing when you throw it away. Any contractors out there, any homeowners that want to do a, a renovation to their home, I don't care if it's buying, let's talk about a reno, they should actually have their place tested before they touch it. Yeah, so people don't ac accidentally disturb materials as they go along. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for doing this, and thanks for the bad news. Anytime. All right, I just finished talking to Jay in the backyard. Um, there is, <laughs> we have asbestos. We have no asbestos in the garage. Oh, good. Uh, so don't touch anything else in the house yet, okay? But do me a favor, drop the ceiling. That's how they used to drive all years ago. That was the size of it. Up it went, and then they plastered the joints. That's what they started with. Now we have four by eight sheets. Yeah. That was years ago. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe we should keep that, Not eh? More work. Imagine how cold this ductwork was. Oh my God, all these people must be freezing in the winter. Just keep turning up the heat, right? Turn up the heat. You can see the paper and just how much effect that the hot and cold, the condensation has got on top of the paper itself. I'm surprised it hasn't molded. But just to see so much black, the air movement, that's just unacceptable. That's why we're here. Strong wood, eh? I'd say this <laughs> cardboard stuff. It's not. What is this? It's just plywood. But I think it's quarter inch. Play? Yeah, it's quarter inch. Oh, you're right. I thought it was the fiber board. It's you amazing know? how strong that is. Jeez, when you're tearing it off layer by layer. Duct work. So we have an R, not even an R12. What is that? It looks like an R10. Look at this. R10 insulation. Yeah, that was cold. Right, how they that for I'm telling you, imagine had they waited, they'd be phoning me in the, in the winter going, we're freezing, <laughs> we're freezing. <laughs> Okay, now it'll be, once you've got this, and that'll be easy, somewhat easy to take it down. Yeah. I was gonna do it, but you know, you're huffing and puffing. They're gonna be done the garage before I'm done this, man. I Are thought, you kidding me? I thought that's plywood. I'm gonna get Damon to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I am the boss. <laughs> he goes, I'm getting at him. I'm going in. Go get him, bud. While you guys are doing this, I'm going to go upstairs in the bathroom. I'm going to cut out the back vinyl board, because I know I can touch that, just to see what they covered up. I'm simply cutting the caulking, which doesn't have asbestos. The vinyl doesn't have asbestos. It's a newer product. I just want to see what they covered up, how they covered up, how ugly it is.
That's ceramic tile. That's usually not a good sign, eh? Because it should be really bonded. <laughs> there we go. Oh, this is not the way to do it. That's not good at all, actually. The wall is actually completely disintegrated behind it. Oh, oh my God, man. So, the wall has appeared to completely collapse in the back of this. And it tells me that this was probably done years ago, that they covered this up. Is yeah. that termite damage, bud? Uh, no, I don't think it's termite. I think what we're looking at is complete rot, right? Wow. Complete rot. I don't think I've ever seen a wall disintegrate that badly. Well, the only thing holding this up was the surround. So what do we have here? It looks like we have a nest of some sort of some animal in here. But everything has been just falling apart behind this wall. Like, there's nothing holding it. I think we've had so much moisture come in from that window. Think about yeah. this for a sec. We have a window with no insulation, right? Yeah. So there's no insulation whatsoever there. So we have all that cold that wants to come right through the glass. And then on this side of it, we have all the heat that's pumping out, and it's just rotted everything in behind the wall. All right, to everyone out there, this is not how you install a tub surround. This is the greatest example I could ever show of a cover-up. We see all this in here, and just the little signs of the nest. Look at the hole right there. It allows everyone in. Is yeah. that not the worst you've ever seen? That's the worst I've ever seen. I've never seen a one piece actually holding up everything behind it. The sill is completely rotten. The wood, all the wood framing, there's a framing, a vertical framing. There was one here, wherever the hell that one is. It's completely rotted out. Well, I'm gonna leave this to show the homeowner and then I'm gonna have uh, Mike and his crew come in and take the rest out because I'm not touching anything else. You took off the vinyl on the back wall. Go take a look. Oh. You think your home inspector might have said there's a window there, there's a new vinyl backing on the wall. What did they cover up? Something I do to check things that uh, is really important is I check for asbestos. So your house has a lot of asbestos in it. I was hoping I wouldn't hear about the word asbestos. Everybody's fearful of that because of what it could lead to. Is it gonna affect your lungs? No. What's gonna affect your lungs if you play with it, if they put the spores in the air. The good news is we're here. That's the only good news you got. Well, we might as well start in the living room because uh, I'm a little nervous about what I've heard. So the basement, because I want you to take the basement out, that's going to be a type 3. It'll be a type 2. Type 2. Drywall joint compound is very minimal within there. Oh, I get it, because we just corners, we're outside corners, inside corners, and joins, where the stucco in the ceiling is, it's all in it. All of it, and you're spreading it all over. I got it. OK, so I don't want to touch the ceiling. I do have to take out the basement, because I need to protect all the HVAC. I need to run some new electrical. We should pull up the tiles since we're here. Yes. You've got, a, you've got a suit up, you've got a plastic up, you've got a clean up. Where does the uh, asbestos go to? Well, the drywall joint compound, actually, and the drywall itself goes clean waste. Since drywall joint compound is such a very minimal part of the actual drywall itself, it can go as clean waste. The VATs, on the other hand, so the vinyl tiles, they have to go as asbestos waste because there's usually a higher concentration of asbestos within the. should be some sort of documentation, but there's not. But at least we can put an awareness before 1985, you have the possibility of asbestos in your drywall joint compound. And? And VATs, stucco. Vinyl tile, Vinyl stucco. Tile. Do you know how much rental I've done all my life? We didn't know this. And I just come in and rip all this down. And I think t still today, people still do it. Contractors still do it. And the problem is, is that they shouldn't be doing it. We should have it checked first. Exactly. If you're a homeowner, you get someone in like Pension Environmental to test, find out, be efficient, turn it around, tell you what the results are. If you have asbestos, then you deal with it properly by going through companies like ours. Or if you don't have asbestos, then hey, have at it. Come on in, guys.
Okay, we're gonna split up into two teams. I'm gonna take Carl upstairs with me, guys, because we really have to start the bathroom. I gotta rip up the floor and do a sub for all that. Rob and Sherry, I'd like you guys down here squaring up the new walls. You guys are gonna start studying down here. Make sure it's perfectly square, okay? So this window is obviously going. I can see Brian's guys did a fantastic job of removing everything that was in here. So I'm thinking big tub at the back end here. So I wanna start by fixing this floor. Okay, I no longer trust it. We're putting a tub here. I wanna make sure this is structurally sound underneath that tub. So I wanna start by cutting this floor back to where the rot stops, okay? So I'm thinking of cutting it right back along this line, along that joist. Wow, that floor was a matter of time. I'm barely hitting it. So we'll replace it with blue three-quarter down. All right. You ready, brother? And then we're going to sheet over the whole thing with another five-eighths, just to give it a little bit more strength. I don't want to lay tile on that, right? So let's get it back into place so we can get this place framed up today, okay? Okay. So what we're doing right now, we're relocating our exhaust vents for our furnace and our hot water tank and also our fresh air for our furnace. They were going out the back of the house. Now at the back of the house, you had doors, windows. Everything about that install was against code. Too low to the ground, again, windows and doors, not enough room. So we would have had to, to extend those pipes seven feet up, insulate them to get them above the doors and the windows. It would have looked horrible. So what we opted to do, it's an open basement here. They've gutted it. Uh, what we're doing is we're going to bring them out the side of the house. Uh, so we're going to have our exhaust, our fresh air, uh, for furnace and hot water tank come out through the side. They'll be up in the joist. We don't have to create a box or anything for them uh, and eliminate them coming out the back. A little bit more work going this way, but at the end of the day, you're not bringing anything that's not within code. And, and that's what we're doing here. We're bringing this up, making it all about code at this point. So what else did you find? Obviously, you guys are sealing up some ductwork after we tore down that ceiling. Uh, none of the duct in the garage was insulated. So we're, today, Wayne's uh, insulating it, getting all the heating runs sealed, yeah. taped. Uh, some of them were broken, so reconnected, and just basically insulating the run. This whole house was a nice box, guaranteed. Well, not for long, bud. Thank you. I don't like the way the plumbing was running right above the entrance. Cold zone, obviously, on the outside. Plus, we've got the garage door, which opens frequently. What I would like to do is reroute it over to the other side, uh, the other side of the garage wall. This is a shared wall, so it is always going to be on the warmer side, at least. And I'm going to run them close to the ductwork, uh, insulate them, as well as bring them through the floor joists just before they run up to the kitchen, which is directly above us. While I was doing that, uh, I've also cleaned up the existing copper lines from the hose bib. Um, which did freeze in the past. Uh, I've noticed several couplings that were implemented, which was a clear sign that the water did freeze and the pipe burst. So that's gonna be, uh, that's been actually removed. I have installed a frost-free hose bib, not at the front, but at the back. So it's gonna be farther away from the main entrance uh, to the garage, as well as the side door. So that'll give the homeowner total peace of mind. Well, we found a single glazed aluminum slider, which is very poor quality and air leakage. And the most surprising thing was the wood frame. It was rotted, rotted, rotted. We touched it, it fell apart on us. Well, we're gonna put a nice vinyl frame, maintenance free, so the moisture will not get to it, so no rotting will not happen ever again in this opening here. We're installing the exhaust to the exterior of the house because there's no bathroom fan here originally. So we're just running a new line and I'm piping it right out the side of the brick because there's not enough headroom on the roof. So we went through the side of the house and we're just gonna tie it in. This way they have a full exhaust system in this bathroom. The unbelievable thing is, is when we peeled down this ceiling, how little insulation was actually in there. I can't even tell you there was an R value to it. 
I didn't like the existing framing here that was weak. It was not put together properly. It's not how we build. So we tore it down and we've reframed. And what we've done is we've kept the plumbing on the warm side. But a garage is an outdoor zone. It's always going to be cold in the winter. Above this rigid two inch insulation is my pipes that are running all my feeds for the kitchen sink, the dishwasher, everything that's in the kitchen. We spray foam all below it, and now this part on the inside becomes the inside part of the house. It will never freeze. I'm ready to spray foam. We fixed the plumbing, we fixed the garage, we fixed the basement. So by us spray foaming this, we're actually gonna help them out by giving them a warmer house and making sure that they stay warm and never have any more complaints. The initial home inspection, I think it, it just wasted our money and our time. In the end, you're stuck with what could have been a potential huge money pit just to fix problems that at least should have been pointed out to us. And, you know, and then we can make a fair decision. Okay, brother, let's go get that step in. Uh, we have the floor depot here today. They're putting up the final flooring up in the kitchen for us. Nice. We have better contracting here today. They're going to do the soffit underneath where the door was, where we spray foamed. Uh, we got a big, big day ahead of us. These are actually nice little steps. What they do is they come in precast forms. You can actually add them to your steps. You can actually make a whole step here. They usually come in three units, so they have a base. They have a middle and they have a top. One thing these guys forgot was the middle. So that was a big last step. They won't be tripping anymore, that's for sure. Yeah. Isn't that nice? We've uh, already called the local utilities. They've turned off the power for us, so we're running on generator now. We discovered that the pipe here was broken. Uh, maybe somebody, a car backed up into it. We really don't know exactly, but it is damaged and it needs to be addressed. So I'm gonna basically have to cut the pipe. I'm gonna install a new piece of pipe and basically put everything back together. Once I've done that, I just call the utilities, they come back, power us back up, and uh, away we go. What I wanna do is protect the post that Joey just installed. What's happened before is a car was able to hit it. There's no protection on it. So what I wanna do is I wanna have the post on the wall, and I'm gonna have my angle iron on both sides of it, so if a car ever hits it, it's gonna hit the angle iron and not the pipe. So Joey's done, generator's off, power's on. And we're good to go. It's a floating floor installation. It's not fastened at all to the floor, and it's been around for a few years, and it's uh, the way to go. Uh, we're cutting this piece for the kitchen. We're just pre-cutting it to get rid of all the excess material so we don't get any rips in it. Now that we got the vinyl pre-cut and ready to lay out, the floors have all been uh, patched, leveled. Any imperfections are smoothed out, so everything will be nice and smooth when we're done. Anytime you're going to exhaust anything outside, let it be a bathroom exhaust, kitchen exhaust, you want to insulate the line. If those louvers do get stuck open, you're going to have some cold air that's going to come back into the, into the house or into the line. So you want to insulate it. That way you're not going to create any condensation in the pipe. So that's the key idea for any time you're doing any type of exhaust, especially kitchen, bathroom. You want to insulate those lines. Really important why we're using concrete board right now. This concrete board does not have a skin. So basically what it is is it's fiberglass mesh and it's been saturated with concrete. So that means that there's no peeling gonna be happening here. What happens is you have drywall that has a skin. If there's too much weight on it, it gets wet, it gets saggy, it peels away from itself. Here we won't have anything peeling away. Another thing is it's got lime in it, it will not mold. In this application, we have a really big, heavy stone. So we're gonna waterproof it, and we have 
There's some reinforcement back here to handle the weight. So what do you think? Do we pick it's the right color or what? Oh, yeah, it's going to look fantastic. The brand is Caesar Stone. Basically, it's 93% quartz, 7% yeah. resin and coloring, compressed into a slab, and then you work it like granite after that. This is what I really love about this product. There's two seams in the corner. Talk about not leaking, plus our curdy on the walls. Who doesn't hate grout lines? <laughs> Eliminate them. Absolutely. Everybody's happy. And just the color, I think, is really going to look. I really like the gray. You did a heck of a good job on that. Just like you knew what you were doing. All matching, yeah. Well, I'm fooling everybody at this point. Good man. My Good time's man. running out, though. <laughs> Thank you very much, buddy. Okay, Thanks. looks great, man. Fantastic. Well, the original panel was a fuse panel. Um, it was outdated, it had its time. So we basically ripped it off the wall, put a new panel board, installed a new panel, uh, which now is expandable as well. Uh, at the same time, we did a few things upstairs. The stove, when they took the ceiling down, was damaged, so we ran a new stove line. They had a dishwasher in place, but there was no power there. Here it comes. So we ran a new line, and a few odds and ends, replaced some old plugs and switches, replaced a few uh, light fixtures here and there. The other big difference is, if you can remember the old panel, which was the fuse panel, I had a whole bunch of spots that were missing. You can actually get your fingers in there and you can electrocute yourself. With the new panel, uh, these are the live buzz bars here, but when you put the cover on, you can see here that the punch outs haven't been punched out, so uh, the homeowners are safe. Every basically, everybody's safe with this panel. The electrical safety authority was here. They've already passed the work, so we're all good. I'm sure that Mike being here with uh, with this team, they're going to do the best job and hope that it's going to be the house that we wanted to be at the beginning. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What do you think, I just pick houses that are screwed up? No, this is everywhere. This is an epidemic because we're buying wrong. We're buying by beauty, not by knowledge. It'll be nice to walk back into the house knowing that the concerns that we had and the concerns Mike pointed out aren't there anymore. He's, he's going to make it right for us. Looks nice and clean, eh? Yeah, it just tidies it up, right? I insulated the back wall. Obviously insulated the ceiling. They could actually park their car in here now, not worry about fumes getting into the house. That's good. Thing, little things like that, you and know, maybe, little safety maybe things. Maybe help keeping the house a little warm for the yeah. winter. Yeah. Well, I really like this. this I is think nice they're going to love it. It smells clean. It does. Great Very job, much. man. Let's go get them. Thanks, buddy. Welcome home. Welcome it's nice home. to see you. Oh, good to see you. you. Thank you. Thank it's God. so great to be here. I'm happy that I'm home. It's the place where I like to be with with Paul and the kids. So you have all new soffit here because oh, wow. we had to fix the electrical. And then we also insulate. We made sure you, we use the spray foam, the two pound spray foam that I love so much, which is going to protect the room up above, not to mention it's not that cold air from driving in. That's what we want to do. Beautiful. Yeah. I want to show you the garage first because we did wreck it. Then we fixed it. Oh. Even smells clean in here. Oh. Wow. Looks good, doesn't it? That's beautiful. Nice. Relieved and amazed. I was just surprised how nice it looked, nice and clean and beautiful. It felt like an inviting place to be. I'd like to move into the garage, actually, <laughs> if I have to. If I ever have to, it's a very nice place to be now. So no more plumbing worries across the wall. We made sure that after everything was down that we not only wrapped all your duct work, fixed all your plumbing, we spray foamed the whole thing. You won't believe the difference that this is going to do by making sure you insulate this garage, protecting the plumbing, protecting the heating, and protecting, obviously, your livable surface upstairs from the cold. You have a brand new panel, because you needed a brand new panel. You have a whole house surge protector on the panel, which I really love. Plus, we put our seal on the panel, which means our electricians, it's all passcode and been inspected by ESA, Electrical Safety Authority. Or about what's behind everything, and if it looks good here, imagine what it looks like on the other side. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> you want to see inside? Uh, yes. Of course. All right, let's go. Okay, we might as well start Ooh. with the basement. Oh, oh, oh. This is uh, 
So let's just talk Very about different. Let's just talk about your basement. Well, uh, after we gutted it, uh, we made sure we brought in and who gutted it. It was more of the question our, yeah. our mental guys that uh, had to take the plaster down because the asbestos was in the yeah. plaster. We made sure we studded the wall, blue wood, spray foam in the background. It's all moisture resistant, yeah. mold resistant, and it's nice and clean again. So all we got to do is move the furniture back. The amount of work that Mike put in, we would have never even, well, we never even been able to get close to that. It's good to know that I'm going to have a warm house, even though I haven't had to experience it yet. I, we're going to avoid that, so that's going to be great for us, the kids, to know that we have a warm house, nice energy savings, and safe. So, you know what? We didn't give you a new kitchen, but it looks pretty good. Come on in. Look at you standing there looking at it. <laughs> oh, man. All the floor was pulled up by our environmental guys, so that was the asbestos in the tile. And believe it or not, this is a linoleum. Really? It doesn't look like it. It looks yeah, like tile, doesn't it? Yeah. Isn't that nice? It is beautiful. And we even finished and hooked oh. up your dishwasher. Dishwasher? Yeah, the yeah. You can use it now. It's not just sitting there. It's hooked up. <laughs> Give you a brand new hood so it's it's exhausting outside and insulated properly the way it should be. You tap? Yes. Oh, my God. You're going to love the tap because if he, you know, if he gets you in a, in a bad mood, <laughs> Just let him down if you want. Oh, I cannot, cannot show the kids oh, that one. Yeah. Gonna... No, no, no. It's almost like That's a new cool. kitchen, isn't it? Yes, I'm yes, gonna be is. here all the time. <laughs> oh, I love the tiles. The new tiles are looking great. The color is beautiful. Yeah, having a working tap in the kitchen that uh, looks very cool, that's <laughs> even better. <laughs> so for your stairs, all we did was put in Ooh. a proper second step. So now you're Ooh. not jumping down. You can actually walk down <laughs> properly. And you notice we no longer have the pipes that were all wrong sticking out here. We've now, since we pulled down the ceiling and everything in your basement, ran it through the ceiling and out that wall. So no harm or worries of off-gassing coming back into your house and everything done properly. We've extended the purge line. You can see it just there for the gas. So if it ever purges, it purges away from the opening windows. And that's just one of the smarter things that we can do, making sure that we put a, a, an armor coating cable around that electrical line. That's for your air conditioning. It just feels fantastic to know that we can run everything, have everything going, and not have to worry about off-gasses, sparks lighting up our house, you know, gas problems. So it's just amazing. Well, I'm ready to show you the bathroom. You want to see the bathroom? Uh, oh, yeah. It looks pretty so. good. Oh, my God. This is what I've been waiting for, 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 for this uh, bathroom. Uh, you can see. <laughs> oh, my God. That looks amazing. Wow. Wow. You got a brand new toilet, brand new sink, cabinet. I love the countertop because this is our new stone that said, uh, this is just, I'm telling you, you're going to love this. We use the same stone in your shower stall. <laughs> and with a brand new window, that really works, doesn't it? This is beautiful. Opening the door and seeing the change, the quality of the material, it's a beautiful new bathroom. We saw the, the way it was crumbling before, and I couldn't imagine exactly what they were going to do to take it from that horrible condition to something. It's just, it looks amazing. It's incredible. The kids will think the new bathroom is amazing. I, the, the problem is getting them out of there. Everything is mold resistant in here. Now you have the, all the proper exhaust fans. That's going to last years upon years upon years. Well, I'm happy. Are you happy? Oh, I'm very happy. Uh, now I'm even more than happy. We should, we should celebrate with a drink. What do you think? Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> another <laughs> thing. Let's get a big thank you. They put so much work, effort, time to make it safe and uh, so beautiful for us. Wow! What'd you do, shake it first? I'll get this wedged out a little later. Oh, there you go. Thank you, sir. Oh, we have a present yeah. for you. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Get it way down. Pound it. Two good people. Two making it right the first time. Love y'all. Cheers. Cheers.